Hey everyone, Carl here, and on today's tutorial, I'm going to walk you through on creating your own uh, customized Linux Live CD. In order to accomplish this and to follow along, you'll need to be running CentOS 7. You'll need to download a copy of the Live CD, uh, pre preferably the CentOS Live CD. That'll be that's what I'll be using today. And also, you'll need to install the Squash FS tools. All right, so let's get started. First, we want to do is navigate to the directory uh, where your ISO is located, and we're going to go ahead and mount that ISO. Uh, in order to do this, we'll do the dash O loop option. And let's just mount to the uh, mount directory. What we want to do is actually copy the contents of this uh, of the of this ISO. Actually, let's go ahead and cd to temp, and we'll we'll copy the contents under the temp directory. Uh, go ahead and create a new directory just to keep it clean and then go ahead and type in your CP and we'll do the uh, dash RF and P option just to preserve the, the ownership of the files in the ISO. I'm not sure if it's actually needed but just be on the safe side. Alright and it should take a minute or so. Okay, once the ISO files are copied over, go ahead and navigate to that directory. And we'll want to navigate to the live OS directory. Okay, and what we'll want to do is we're going to actually expand out that squash FS image. So in order to do so, what we'll need to do is run the unsquash FS that's included in the squash FS tools and then point it to the uh, dr uh, the image file of the squash FS and this uh, should take uh, a minute or so depending on how fast or how many processors your, your uh, system has alright so once this is uh, once the unsquash is finished up go ahead and type in ls and you'll see the squash fs dash root directory. What we'll do is navigate in there, and then there will be a live OS directory. You want to navigate into that, and then you'll see that there is another uh, image file. What we want to do is go ahead and create a new folder, just called ext3fs, and then go ahead and mount using the dash o loop option mount that img into that directory okay and now what we'll do is go in we'll and now what we'll do is type in ch root and then go ahead and navigate to that directory and this will change the, the file system temporarily for the for your computer so you can modify the the files in that live OS CD okay and just to make sure that we're in the correct area uh, we can do a DFH and that won't work or we can actually type in LS and you can see that the temp directory is empty which is where our ISO is on our actual workstation. So go ahead and now what we'll do just to at this point you can you can modify any files that you need in the the file structure. Uh, what I'll do is go ahead and uh, run some commands and customize it where I'll have the system uh, go into a command prompt window and automatically 
login to root versus the uh, the GUI interface that's typically found on the live OS CDs. So in order to do that, uh, I'll go ahead and change the uh, targets for uh, the GUI uh, to a CLI or a multi-user target. So what you want to do, want to do is type in system CTL and we're going to set default to multi-user target and go ahead and press enter. So that was changed and now we're going to uh, go ahead and change the auto login. So what we'll do is go ahead and remove the existing uh, giddy tty1 file that's in our system d system giddy target once and there's the service file so we'll remove that and then copy over a new template now we want to modify this file. Oh. Actually, it copied it to the wrong, wrong directory. Let me fix that real quick. Okay, now what we'll do is scroll down and what we're looking for is the service. So at this execute start line, what we want to do is add in dash dash auto login and it will be for root. And then under the install section at the bottom, We'll add in a uh, semicolon alias and then the file name. Go ahead and do a colon RQ to save it. And then we'll type in a symbolic link to that new file. Okay, and once we're done here, we can go ahead and exit out of ch root. And we'll want to unmount the uh, ext3 folder and remove that. And just make sure that img is still there. All right, and then we'll back out of there, back out of squash fs root. And what we want to do at this point is remove the previous squashfs image. And then we'll go ahead and create the new squashfs image based on that squashfs root directory. So you want to type in mk squashfs. and then the squash fs dash root directory and then just type in squash fs img and then we'll use the dash no append dash always use fragments Let's see squash fs pen oh, typo fragments okay so this should take a few minutes to to actually create that uh, new IMG directory or excuse me I am IMG uh, file all right now once that IMG file is created we can go ahead and re go ahead and remove the uh, squash dash root directory Okay, 
And now we'll need to go ahead and recreate the, the ISO. So within that main directory on where we copy the files, the ISO directory, that's where we want to be when we uh, go ahead and create the the uh, ISO. So go ahead and type in MK ISO FS and then it'll be a dash O option and then uh, wherever directory you want to save your ISO in. So I'll save it to the FS share and then type in the file name that you want. So I'll use custom ISO dot ISO and then we'll need to use the dash B and then we'll point it to the ISO Linux ISO Linux bin file and then dash C and now we'll go to the ISO Linux boot.cat and type in dash dash no emule dash boot and then dash dash boot load size to four and then dash dash boot info dash table and then type in dash r dash j dash v lowercase dash t and dash v uppercase and then type in sent os dash seven dash live cd dash x86 underscore 64 and then space and dot it's it's important to have that sent os dash seven dash live cd name uh, otherwise the chances are it, it won't boot i've have experiences in the past where uh, I wanted to customize that name and um, I actually needed to to edit additional files I believe it was under the the ISO Linux directory uh, in order to accomplish this uh, so yeah, just keep the the name just like that and go ahead and press enter and that should kick off the uh, creation for that ISO and this one's a lot faster than than creating the, uh, the squash FS file. All right, once that's created, uh, now you can go ahead and test out your your uh, new image. So just to kind of demonstrate. I do have a, the original image loaded already. So as you can see, the original image is running and that's just a base, your basic live CD instance. Now I'll go ahead and point to the, uh, the new image that we created. And it'll be this one. Okay, and we'll power that on and check it out. Okay, as you can see, it, it finally booted up. Uh, it might take a little bit longer than uh, you would expect since it's a uh, kind of a, a completely black screen it doesn't have any kind of uh, uh, information uh, you know scrolling by saying indicating it's booting up but uh, it took a uh, about a minute to, to boot up so as you can see it dropped me down into root and it also had uh, brought me into the uh, command line versus the the GUI that's uh, typically seen on the, your uh, your default or your the original uh, live CD. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them down below. And I would like to thank you for watching.